Great. Okay, well, um, I'll start off with the tanks that I've used here. Um, I've tried several different ones. As you can see, I've got some plastic ones here, and I did start off with some shallower ones, but it didn't allow enough depth for the bell siphon to work. Um, so go for something with at least 12 inches, 11 inches. Uh, 300 mil, I think, is the recommended uh, minimum depth. Um, go for a stronger plastic. Some of them I've had have been very brittle, and when you twist them like that, they just snap. Obviously, you can have water in here. I'm fortunate that I'm in a conservatory with a, a soak away drain, um, and I have had a plastic uh, tank burst with water in it, and it made a hell of a mess. So do yourself a favor and uh, get, not the che cheapest, but certainly get a, a good quality. Uh, this one was a more expensive one, and you can see I've already shattered this one as well, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, make sure you've got a flat area. Some of them have rips all over the place, which is hard to drill the hole. And um, so basically, uh, just to quickly cap on there, the reason that this shatters on the bottom there is when you're drilling it. And um, I use my hole cutter to the size of my fitting. And this uh, drill bit here that drills the pre-hole is too big. And it, it caused the plastic to shatter. Um, so do a pre drilled hole with a very small bit, maybe even another size up before you attempt to use the big one and that will eliminate the uh, plastic shattering. When it gets to this bit here, um, it really actually burns it more so than it cuts it. It kind of just melts the plastic when it's cutting through it. But um, although this one is uh, no longer any good, I'm just going to use this for the demonstration to show you how I make these tanks. Um, start off with my first uh, fitting that I got was I bought these from a aquaponics supplier and uh, basically they use a flood and drain system with um, two of these one with the water coming in and one to drain the water out and um, it has three parts that just is a, a medium filter which we're not going to use so I'll get rid of that and uh, this is just a, a, a razor um, that one would be for the the flood out and then they use that one for pumping the water in but I'm using this if you have a pipe that fits directly in there then don't worry about using this um, I hadn't and I wanted to go ahead and use it so um, anyway I'll show you just uh, another mistake um, I've done and I've seen other people do is they use silicon to seal this when they're doing it you don't need to uh, with the rubber washer um, from the inside here, just push that through and use your nut to lock it on. Um, this will hold it in place sufficient. You don't need to add silicon. Plus, if you want to do maintenance, you need to be able to get that off. If you do that up tight enough, and both my systems are set up this way and neither of them link. Um, I've also positioned my tanks over my uh, of my tank area so that there isn't any room for error. Um, next stage I did is I added a bit of just a bit of 19 mil or um, three quarter inch irrigation pipe and I added that onto the end so that I could add uh, a corner bracket like that. Um, for some reason I've just found that that I'm not going to push this all the way I'm just demonstrating to you some reason I found that it, it seems to keep the siphon more regular if it's got a, a corner rather than it just gushing out. Not really sure why, but um, it definitely makes a difference. Uh, but like I say, if you don't want to use this, you can just have that downpipe straight into there or if you are not directly over your tank and need to use um, some kind of rubber pipe to run it to the tank, then that's also fine. Um, but this is just my own personal preference. And like I say, I just find that it, it aerates the water and flushes better with the um, with the corner bracket on there. Okay, so that's all that you need for the, um, the drain fittings there. And um, I'm going to get back on to... Okay, I'll show you the bell siphon part of it. Um, basically, I've used the razor area that pushes into there to insert uh, this uh, 20 mil 
rip pipe. This, uh, this I get to the height I require. Um, that there is about um, one inch below the growing area. Um, so however deep your tank is, is you want to allow that to be about about one inch below of uh, the growing area. Um, if you have a pipe that fits straight into that, then you don't have to use this little setup that I've done. I mean, this is not ideal because it's flexible. It's best to have a more straight uh, pipe anyway. But um, you can just see how that goes and just show you the demonstration. Um, this is a 60 mil um, pipe that I've used for my bell siphon. Uh, again, I've measured it so that it's a couple of inches higher than this stand pipe here. So just measure from there, um, allowing a couple of inches. And uh, as I showed you uh, earlier on, with the uh, end cap stuck on, it does stick above the, uh, the growing area, it doesn't matter. As long as your overflow pipe, which is this one, is about an inch below the surface, and as long as you've got a couple of inches from the top of that to the top of the inside there, you're gonna have a good siphon. Uh, the other thing, I just stuck that on there to make it easy to handle. Um, on the bottom, a couple of uh, slots with a hacksaw, and then I just got the pliers and just basically work, worked them off there. Um, that gives plenty of room for the uh, water to flow in and rise up. The hole there, you don't need to do. I did that when I was having problems with the uh, siphon breaking. Um, it, it just constantly ran and I drilled that thinking it was going to help break the siphon and it was actually too much water flowing into the tank. Um, so that basically just sits over the top like that. And then also what I've done is using a soda bottle, um, cut the top and the bottom off and drilled holes all the way through, a few up the side, and that goes over the top there so that when you load all your growing medium in there, um, it stops it getting into the pipe when you do uh, remove your bell siphon if you want to do maintenance or anything. So basically, you're looking at a system like that. Um, this one's short for this one, but so you'd have your, your uh, grade uh, gradient there, your standpipe, and your bell cover over. So it's a pretty simple, um, simple setup. Uh, like I say, the problems I had was originally I couldn't stop it from um, breaking the siphon, and that was too much water and then before um, I couldn't make it create the siphon and that's because I'd made this too close to the top of this and it, for whatever reason it wasn't working. Another little tip that you can use as well if you, um, if you do uh, have a problem with making it uh, siphon is just cut off a little piece of pipe maybe half an inch and insert it in there so you narrow the neck of that that will also help um, you know if you reduce it push it down so it causes a, a little cascade in and that will help seal it off as well. So that's your um, that's your bell siphon and drain it part of it. Uh, the only other part is to um, feed the water in. Now I have a, just a little cheap pump, it was $20, pumps about 300 litres per hour and I find it excellent uh, pump into the two tanks and allows me enough force to regulate the flow as well. So this flexible pipe goes to the pump in the tank and comes up. I've affixed it to a T-junction um, just because I'm going to two tanks. If you haven't got two tanks, you might want to just run that straight to your, uh, to your drip off. Um, add a little bit of uh, pipe on there just to extend it out before you put your uh, tap on there. Uh, again, your tap is great for flowing the speed of the water um, into the tank. So that just pushes in there like that. So you can see how I'm going, you duplicate it on that side there. And then what I did, um, if you want, you could just put like a corner bracket and drop it straight into the tank like that. Um, I, I prefer to choose this method where I've made a little sprinkler, um, extra bit of pipe, and that can be as long as you want to make it for your tank. Uh, use a little end cap to seal it off. And then using your drill, just put a series of holes along there to create the sprinkler effect. And again, you duplicate it on that size. Um, that's really it to get the water in. Uh, from the pump all the way in, regulate it to both sides. Uh, sprinkle system, if you choose to have that one. If not, just go for the L bracket. And um, yeah, it that, that, that really is simple. Um, I When I first set my first one up, I went and bought some 
proper uh, plumbing fittings and stuff. It's very expensive, and to be honest, it's too big for this system. Um, you start getting the bigger fittings, and it just it really doesn't work too well, and it's expensive. Go for your garden irrigation piping. Um, this is um, uh, 13 mil, half inch, and on the bottom there I've got 19 mil, which is about three quarter inch. And um, it's all garden irrigation, drip irrigation pipe, and so forth, and fittings, and it's been perfect. It's quite inexpensive. Uh, a little tap fitting like that is about three bucks. These little fittings are about two bucks. Um, you're Irrigation tubing is very inexpensive. I think it was about 20 bucks for about 10 meters. This is more expensive and that's why I haven't used it all over. Um, but I did use it from the pump because it's a little bit more flexible than this stuff is. So yeah, basically that's it. Um, again, make sure you use a really good tank to put your, uh, keep your fish in. And um, you can see my system is all working but I haven't added fish yet. I've just uh, stabilised it, made sure it's all working. And now what I'm going to actually do is get some goldfish, um, put them in there and test the system to see how it's performing before I go ahead. And I'm going to add um, some uh, jake perch to my system. Okay, well, uh, thanks for looking. And uh, keep watching for more updates.